Consulate and uh, Royal Agricom for inviting me here uh, to tell a little bit about uh, the work we do at Deltaris. Uh, my name is Anneke Marsman. I work as a project leader and researcher for uh, Deltaris. But I'm also a coordinator of a group of Dutch companies uh, who try to establish cooperation between Dutch and Chinese companies in the field of soil and groundwater remediation. And Deltaris is one of those companies, but also Royal Icocom and Boscaris and David Dredging, who are present here uh, today. Uh, so first I want to tell a little bit about uh, uh, Deltaris. Deltaris is a quite new uh, knowledge institute in the Netherlands. Uh, it's based on uh, Delta areas. And um, it was founded about uh, five years ago based on uh, existing uh, knowledge institutes in the Netherlands which work on uh, soil and groundwater, uh, surface water. And uh, the, government, the Dutch government decided that there should be only one uh, knowledge institute that combines all this uh, knowledge. And Delvaris is an independent uh, knowledge institute. And, um, we uh, try to form a bridge between uh, Dutch universities and uh, practical use of, of this uh, fundamental knowledge. And uh, we as Delta think we are successful uh, when we can uh, use this knowledge in uh, society. And we work closely together with the Dutch government, but also with uh, contractors in the Netherlands and with uh, consultancies, uh, both nationally and internationally. Uh, so, uh, our mission is to uh, try to enable a Delta life, and it's also in the, incorporated in the name uh, Deltaris. And uh, we focus on uh, soil, uh, surface water, groundwater infrastructure. And we try to make this, um, in, in these teams, uh, uh, the life in the Delta areas uh, good for our society. So we can distinguish uh, a couple of uh, themes that we work on at the Tars. The first is uh, flood risk and uh, the availability of water and soil resource, resources, uh, Delta infrastructure and healthy water and soil systems. And the last one is the main theme I work on and I want to focus on uh, today in my presentation. So I want to make a comparison between the Dutch Delta and the Pearl uh, River Delta and focus on, on Delta life. And here you see uh, two uh, Google Map pictures of the Dutch uh, Delta. Here's the Dutch Delta and the Pearl River Delta. And, um, it's so most of the time Delta areas in all around the world are very urbanized. And here we see the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And here uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen is about here, I think. And um, as everybody knows, uh, Delta life is under threat of coastal flooding, uh, climate changes, river flooding, uh, rising sea levels, um, and coastal erosion. But, uh, and a lot of people are working on that, but besides uh, the protection against this climate change um, it's also very essential for economical and so social well-being to protect the groundwater and food safety in these areas and for, also for water transport and uh, water use for industrial uh, purposes, uh, irrigation and drinking water purposes. So, as you can see, most uh, of the uh, important seaports on, on the, in the world are uh, Chinese and they are in uh, Delta areas. But also, Rotterdam is on the fourth place, Guangzhou on the sixth, and Shenzhen on the fourth place. Uh, and still, uh, these ports, as you can see here, on the total cargo amount, that these ports are still increasing. So, that means this will have a large effect on the uh, groundwater uh, quality in these areas. So now I want to focus on uh, the port of Rotterdam, where we work on in the Netherlands, and uh, make a comparison with the port of Guangzhou. 
and they both have a very long history. Uh, Rotterdam is already exists since the 14th century, and since the 1950, we have a, a large petrochemical industry, cargo, transshipment, and very large oil refinery, which has a very big impact on groundwater quality. And also for Guangzhou, it's a comparable uh, history, very long history since the Qin Dynasty, and it's also uh, served as a trading port for the Silk Road on the sea. And uh, in recent history, it's a very uh, important port for uh, loading and discharging storage and many other industrial uh, activities, which will also have a very big impact on the groundwater and surface quality. So now I want to tell you a little bit about how we handle this in the Netherlands, uh, the area of the, the port uh, of Rotterdam, and uh, tell you about a new management strategy that we want to incorporate uh, in the Netherlands. And here we see a, a cross section of the harbour, where right? this is the harbour of Rotterdam, and uh, this is an infiltrating area, so the groundwater goes uh, like this to uh, residential areas on the south side and on the north side uh, of the port and also here we see uh, the surface water. Uh, so this new strategy consists of uh, looking at it differently not only at the source of the contaminations but to, uh, to the source part receptor and look at uh, where the groundwater contamination will go. So here it starts, we know that we, there is a very complex, uh, very large contamination here below the harbour and it goes this way to the aquifer and then to the uh, residential areas, it goes up again. Uh, so if you look what we want to protect, uh, instead of looking at the source, we can identify uh, so-called planes of compliance. Um, the first plane of compliance is the surface water. So we see here the plane of compliance one, which is the emission to the surface water. Uh, the second plane of compliance is uh, the, the aquifer below the harbor. And the third plane of compliance is uh, the boundary around the harbor. So these are planes that we want to protect. Instead of looking at only to the source, we look at this as receptors of the contamination. Here again is a cross-section of this approach, where we can see two companies in the harbor with uh, different contaminations, like the, the purple one and the green one. And, uh, Normally, uh, the legislation in the Netherlands is that you should uh, look at this contamination and at this contamination and clean it up and monitor uh, around this, these areas. Now, this new mega site approach, you take is these uh, plumes as a whole and monitor it on the boundary. This is the area that you want to protect. So this means that you can have a, a cost-effective monitoring only at the boundary instead of monitoring within the area. And this means that there is a cost-effective solution for complex problems. We also know that um, uh, in the Netherlands there is a lot of discussion about responsibility of these plumes and at the end nothing happens, no remediation at all. So if you take the plumes together and try to manage it here, uh, you have a better solution. Also, a very big advantage of this approach is that in biodegradation. If you look at only this plume and look at the biodegradation until this border, we have a very limited time for biodegradation. If the plume can uh, spread until this border, there's much more time and space for biodegradation of the organic pollutants. Again, here we see uh, another uh, 3D uh, conceptual model of the harbour of Rotterdam, where this is uh, the harbour, the grey area, and these are the polder areas that need to be protected from this contamination. So here, in yellow, here is the contamination 
Here again are the uh, planes of compliances to the surface water, the aquifer below the harbor, and the, the plane of compliance the, is the uh, uh, border to the polder uh, areas. Uh, to get more insight in uh, what are the risks that the contaminants will reach this border, we developed a, a model at Del Terrace. Uh, we, we put in some representative contaminant distribution. At first we had no idea, no data about uh, the actual contamination in the area. So we divided the area in industrial types and made a probabilistic uh, uh, idea about what kind of contaminants should uh, belong to every kind of uh, industry type. Industry type. Um, besides that, uh, we have some uh, hydrogeology parameters in this model. Uh, what is uh, very specific for the harbor of Rotterdam are sand piles that are used at uh, the beginning uh, of the development of the harbor to have some drainage. But um, at this moment, they uh, speed up the contamination, the spreading of the contamination in the aquifer. Also, a very important parameter in this model is the natural attenuation, the biodegradation. It's very important to have uh, insight in, in if biodegradation is possible for each contaminant. And um, it's, it gives insight if the, the plume doesn't reach the border at all because of the biodegradation. Also, land use is a very important parameter in this model. So, we modeled it with a Monte, Monte Carlo analysis to uh, do some risk analysis. Here are some examples of the input in our model. This is the subsurface, how it's included in the model. And here are some boreholes that we uh, put in the model to compare uh, data with our model. And at this moment we have a model of 200 model layers of half a meter thickness and a 5 by 5 meter grid. So we can zoom in and on the actual plumes that are in the model. <coughs> So this is an example of the modeling results, where we here uh, look at this uh, uh, plane of compliance. This is a part of the harbor, it's called uh, the bottleneck, uh, where we do a pilot now. And um, these colors um, means uh, that there is a chance of exceeding the intervention value. And the intervention value are in the Netherlands are um, defined by the Dutch government for every uh, contaminant. So this means the chance of exceeding these intervention values. So we see that at the south part here is a chance, uh, a risk of spreading of the contaminants in 2035 and here and here a small part. So first we did a risk assessment for the whole area on these different plates of compliance. So we looked at the impact on uh, the surface water, the first plane of compliance, and it turned out that uh, it was very small to, uh, if you compare it to uh, direct emission uh, to the surface water, and uh, the concentration uh, stayed well below uh, the norms that were defined by the Dutch government. So actually this plane of compliance is no uh, problem in this area. And then we uh, calculated the impact on the aquifer, the second plane of compliance below uh, the harbor. And we saw that there's already a considerable impact on this aquifer and its increasing. But on the other hand, we know that this area will, be, uh, will not be used in the future for residential areas or for drinking water purposes. And it's already very easy to solve water. So it was decided that that is no problem at all if the contaminant reaches the second plane of compliance. Then third, the impact to the third plane of compliance, the border of the area. And we saw from the risk analysis that uh, at this moment uh, the impact is relatively low, uh, but in a, it will uh, increase very much in the future. So this is for the Rotterdam area. It is a very important plane of compliance that should be focused on. Uh, so based on uh, this risk analysis, on this part of the area,
area. This is the holding harbor. And we focus now on uh, this part, the bottom where we will apply it. Um, based on the results I showed you before, we did do some compliance monitoring. So here are all the wells placed uh, to make sure that uh, we notice if uh, some contaminants will spread outside the area. So after that we started to do a pilot uh, in this part of the, the harbor and try to find some more data about the actual contaminants in this area. So these companies uh, work together with us at Eric, but also uh, with the port of Rotterdam, the municipality of Rotterdam and the industry and uh, there are some uh, important industries that are located in this area and they provide us with contaminant data so we can have more insight in what's going on in this area. So the strategy now in Rotterdam is that um, there shouldn't be any uh, new source in the upper layer and this upper layer also remains the responsibility of the industry that is located there. So it's, it's about 5 meter thickness of the soil. And uh, below that, there will be a combined uh, strategy for this deep groundwater. And this will be to protect this third claim of compliance. And um, we're trying now to establish some uh, buying off uh, responsibility uh, for the companies and to have management of this part uh, by the port of Rotterdam or the municipality of Rotterdam. They are still discussing this at the moment. So our conclusions for this uh, part, for this pilot project, are that uh, we can uh, have an integral approach by selective uh, source removal. Only uh, if we know that there is a risk, there will be actual remediation. Uh, another possibility is uh, force natural attenuation in the deep groundwater to prevent spreading outside the area and smart monitoring. Only monitoring where we expect uh, a problem, where there is a risk of spreading. So the expected cost reduction is about 40 to 50 percent in 30 years time. And uh, the, the cost will be uh, divided between the companies, the national government in the Netherlands, the municipality of Rotterdam and the port of Rotterdam. And if this pilot uh, succeeds, we will expand it to the whole port area. So here again we see a picture of the, the cost benefit of this approach. Actually the current practice is quite low because uh, there is a lot of discussion who is responsible for every clue, so uh, nothing really happens then. Uh, but if every clue would be cleaned up, this would be the cost. It's very high, very uh, large cost. And this is a, a risk-based approach that we propose now. So this is much uh, lower than uh, the cost of the utility location specific. Uh, so the advantages of this uh, megasite approach is that we can protect the residential area and farms around the harbor. That we make optimal use of uh, natural resilience because we have much more time and space for biodegradation. Another advantage is uh, optimiza optimization of uh, monitoring because we only monitor at the uh, location where we expect uh, spreading and where there's a risk. So it also means that it will be cost effective and the modeling gives insight in, in these risks. So now back to the comparison between the, the Pearl River Delta and the Dutch Delta. It is my question to you, is would this approach be useful for the Pearl River Delta? Because the situation is very comparable and I think uh, the, the, because the, uh, the ports here yeah, also have very long history that also will be a lot of contamination. And uh, since these ports have so uh, large economic uh, importance, um, exit to excavation uh, won't be a solution probably. So I wonder what is the current approach, what do they do here uh, to remediate uh, the contamination below the hours 
and uh, I would like to discuss with you how we can work together and uh, have an exchange of ideas. Thank you very much for your attention. You can uh, email me also if you want to have some brochures outside about this uh, approach and also about uh, the construction of the companies who try to establish cooperation. Thank you very much.